Here in the North Cascades, this is where grizzly bears used to call home, but it's been decades since they've been seen here and a plan to bring them back is years in the making. So many people have become unwilling to share even the remotest places on earth with other creatures. It's a question that will soon be answered. Should grizzlies return to the North Cascades? This is a cause we've supported. I am of the firm belief that humans and grizzlies can get along together. Or not. It's absolutely false. These are people that farm, people that have cattle, people that have children. The community sharing opinions as leaders listen. The number one question that I get in 18 years of my campground, do we have to worry about bears? This listening session is one of many as Washington leaders decide whether or not to move forward with plans to reintroduce grizzly bears to the North Cascades. They were lost here because of people. This is a story of people killing bears. North Cascades Wildlife Program Supervisor Jason Ransom says it's been more than 25 years since U.S. officials confirmed seeing a grizzly in the North Cascades. Fish and Wildlife's Wayne Casewarn says it's their past here that makes this a considered place to nurse the species back to health after being declared endangered in 1975. It is a place where historically we had grizzly bears. Part of that federal mandate, a requirement to help the bear population recover wherever it's possible. We have a significant opportunity to recover grizzly bears in this area. In the city at Seattle's Woodland Park Zoo, there is one grizzly bear. Fern came to us from Montana. Conservation scientist Robert Long says bears and humans already coexist in the wild right now. People in Washington, especially people in the Cascades, tend to live and hike with bears all the time. They're black bears. And a lot of the same things that you would tend to do to make sure you're hiking safely or living safely among black bears is the same thing with grizzly bears. With this plan to potentially bring grizzlies back, Washington has three options on the table. Alternative A would bring no change, no grizzlies added, the current endangered species rules stay in place. Alternatives B and C each gradually bring 25 bears through a multi-year span. Ultimately, the goal would be to grow to 200 bears, which could take 60 to 100 years. B would keep the current endangered species rule in place. C would create new rules. One major change would give landowners more rights to protect their animals if other preventative steps have been taken with fish and wildlife already. In certain circumstances, we could issue a lethal take permit to a landowner to kill a grizzly bear that is has been offending by taking livestock. But that would be rare. In parts of the U.S. where thousands of bears live and millions of people visit, there are only seven bear attacks on people every year on average, with less than one resulting in death. In the Selkirk ecosystem in northeastern Washington, which has a comparable number of grizzlies to the Cascades plan, there have been two people injured in the last 42 years. An experience Alexandra and Luke Davis came face to face with. He was definitely more than a nuisance. He was a threat and a danger. Their family lives near the Selkirk Recovery Zone, where an estimated 50 grizzly bears live on the U.S. side. And as you can see, the fence here, he pushed through. One repeatedly came to their property, ripping through fences and killing chickens, even tearing into a bear-proof bin. He took the barrel and was probably 10 feet from our daughter's window. And that's when it, like the mama bear and me comes out and I'm like, hey, this bear needs to be dealt with. They called Fish and Wildlife, who set up cameras and eventually traps. Then they successfully sedated the bear and moved it. Once you move into these areas, you know that we already know that they're in this area, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean we have to tolerate when they're tearing down our fence eating our chickens. But they do not support the idea of more in the North Cascades. I think if they do go forward with the reintroduction, people really need to educate themselves on what's getting dropped in their backyard. The bulk of grizzlies diets do consist of berries, but the state's report shows that in Montana from 2019 to 2022, grizzlies killed an average of 65 cattle and 34 sheep each year. But there are thousands of grizzlies living there. There is one key part of the puzzle that will influence the future of grizzlies in the Cascades. What happens in the North Cascades in Canada? Our nation, the Silk Nation, um, has always recognized grizzly bears, Kilauna, uh, as protected and sort of a cornerstone, a pillar of cultural integrity and, and landscape and ecosystem health. Okanagan Nation Alliance's Kaylin Glasser says in British Columbia, the First Nations are moving forward with plans to reintroduce grizzlies to their side of the Cascades as early as 2024, meaning 
they eventually will end up in the U.S. They're going to travel across the border. Um, that's a given. We, we know that. Some of those bears will certainly find their way south and we will have them in this ecosystem. And so the question is not so much, you know, if we want to have bears here, because bears will probably find their way here. It's what tools do we want to have to coexist with them? That's why state leaders say they prefer the third option, which allows them to create new rules. But that can only happen if there are no grizzlies already. And with grizzlies eventually moving to the North Cascades from Canada, there is a small window of time to set up the new rules before they get here. How much do you weigh the locals and residents and visitors versus Native American and First Nation voices? versus the actual bears themselves? Um, that's a great question. Grizzly bears is certainly a, a, a high profile issue. It's a very complex issue and there's a huge diversity of values and opinions of different stakeholder groups. It's complex. Sifting through the different opinions, figuring out what's best for the North Cascades. For Environment Northwest, I'm Leah Pizzetti. And the public comment period is open through next Monday, November 13th.